between Fabricio Verdum and Kane Velasquez. Here's the former UFC heavyweight champion and in all likelihood future UFC Hall of Famer, Kane Velasquez. You guys have been sharpening each other's skills for years and it's good to see Kane back and healthy here tonight. Exactly where he belongs. Kane Velasquez is a fighter and he deserves to be fighting inside of the octagon. One of the tighter strikers the UFC has ever seen in the heavyweight division. The cardio, the pace, the pressure that you face when you fight a Cain Velasquez is overwhelming. Guys melt, and it's because after one round, you realize we're just getting started. Right. And Cain's only revving up the engine. It's truly, truly difficult to stare down the barrel of a fight with Cain Velasquez. And he hasn't necessarily adopted my cardio Cain moniker, but there are a <laughs> few guys that can match the cardiovascular strength of the great Cain Velasquez. Big spot for him here tonight. All right, so here he is making his way to the octagon for another heavyweight title defense. This has been the baddest man on the planet now for several years, and he has taken on all comers more often than not, leaving them twitching on the canvas. Knockout power for days. The question is tonight, with a challenge like this, can he walk out the way he came in as the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world? get you our tale of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. The American is 31, the Brazilian is 43. Velasquez weighed in at 240 pounds. The reach is identical. All right, we send it inside the octagon to the veteran voice, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Eve Loving. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 14 wins, three losses. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 240 pounds. Fighting out of San Jose, California, presenting the challenger, Kane. And now introducing a champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a Muay Thai kickboxer and jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 24 wins, nine losses, and one draw. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 231 pounds. Fighting out of Los Angeles, California, USA. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending USC heavyweight champion of the world, Fabrizio Bicavolo Verdun. UFC belt on the line, guys. Protect yourself at all time, obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your corner.
single collar tie. Right hand punch for the clinch. Velazquez gets the tie clinch here. The hip toss as he takes him down. Now we'll see what he can do with it. Right into side control. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Nice hammer fist. Oh, good work here to the body by Velasquez. Nowadays, you see guys just throwing little shots that don't really matter. Very few guys now are committed to ground and pound as they were in the past. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. All right, he's got side control here, DC. You know, he's got a lot of different submissions in his arsenal once this fight gets to the ground. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Well, he's in a compromising spot here, DC. You gotta figure out a way to get back to your feet. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. All right, so pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to harm. Oh, yeah, he's landing very accurately, and he's landing to get damage on. All right, side control now, DC. You know he's in his element on the ground. A lot of tricks up his sleeve. A lot of tricks. Well, any time you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Close guard. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Well, pretty good work off of the bottom here by Velasquez. Oh, he's got the knee on the belly. Could be trouble defensively. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Oh, nice right hand. Oh, Verdun's got the full mount. I mean, how many can he take? Oh, looks like he's transitioning to an armbar. You cannot stay in the guard of these great jujitsu guys. And attack an armbar. Oh, we're getting a finish here. This might just be a matter of time. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in the submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. All right, a lot of highlights from which to choose over those previous five minutes, DC. Let's take a look at the replay. Yeah, and for all the good that he did in that round, it was the punching that really led to him really taking control of the fight. He did a great job finding his shot over and over again. Landed some good shots, DC, but really unable to string anything together. And beautiful thing down to land. But he's going to attack the triangle choke here. Oh, nice. Now he falls back into the finishing position. in the fight. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in the half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestler stand-up, get to your knees, post your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hooks. But get to your hands, stand up, fight the hands, break away and escape. But it's so much more free-flowing than the half guard in the side control, because all you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free, so you have more freedom to use yours. Now he's chasing the triangle. And this could be trouble here. Looks like it's pretty tight. He's trying to work his head out of harm's way. It, it might be over. Watch triangle, watch triangle.
punishes his opponent by way of submission. as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He does a great job of staying patient. He doesn't rush or panic. You are never safe when you're fighting this guy. You're in a lot of trouble. You're in a lot of trouble the entire time when you're this good in the submission. So there he is, the baddest man on the planet, UFC heavyweight champion of the world, a title that every heavyweight wants. He has it after the win by submission here tonight. He leaned on the grappling, and he got the job done in a big way. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Levine has called a stop to this contest at three minutes, three seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by submission, due to an arm triangle choke, and still, the undisputed UFC So we hear and still tonight, our UFC heavyweight champion came in with a lot of pressure, a lot of height, and he successfully defends the title here tonight. 